Hi everyone. Have you ever found you were out taking photos and you stumbled across some flowing water, like a waterfall, and you didn't have an ND filter and you didn't have a tripod? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make that water blur. I taught this technique in a video I did maybe two years ago and before that in a video maybe four or five years ago. Today's video, I kind of simplified it a little bit. I took out a couple steps and I made it hopefully easier to follow. Now, if you're ever out anywhere and you don't have a tripod or an ND filter, if, for example, I was at a place near my house called Glen Falls and I didn't have any ND filters with me, although I did have a tripod in the car. I didn't carry it with me. I walked over the falls with just my camera. What you can do if you want to get that kind of flowing water look is set your camera up so it does some type of high-speed continuous shooting. Um, pretty much every camera today can do that. Some might be very slow, only do six or seven frames a second. Others could do over 30 frames per second. I happen to have my Nikon Z7 II with me, so what I did was, as I set it up in high speed continuous, I framed up the scene, I stood as still as possible, and I fired off a number of images. And I think there's 36 here. They're pretty much all the same thing. So I just stood very still and fired off 36 images. Then what I did was, when I got home, is I imported these images in Lightroom. Now you don't have to use Lightroom. You can use any uh, application you like that you process raw files in. I loaded those raw files into Lightroom and I processed one of them. Did the complete processing on one and then I just copied that processing to all the rest of them. Then what I did was is I exported the images from Lightroom as JPEGs. You don't have to use JPEGs. You could use TIFF files. You could even use PSD files. I preferred to use JPEGs. It just works faster. So I also, when I exported them as JPEGs, I reduced the size a little bit. Uh, a Nikon RAW file from a Nikon Z7 II is 8256 by 5504, I think. And I just reduced them to 2000 pixels on the long side. You don't have to do that either, but it will make what we're going to be doing in Photoshop go much faster if you have a smaller image. So I have these processed 36 images that are 2000 pixels on the uh, long side in a folder on my desktop. Now we're ready to do our thing in Photoshop. So open up Photoshop and what you want to do is load all those images that are in that folder in a stack it's called. So to do that we're going to go up to File down to scripts, then down to load files into stack. When you do that, this little load layers dialog box appears. And what you need to do is load those images into this box. To do that, you click on browse, navigate to where those images are on your computer, click on the first one, hold the shift key down, click on the last one so they're all selected, and then click open. And you'll see they're all right here right now. Don't worry if they're out of order, it's no big deal. Once they're all here, what you need to do is, since you did not use a tripod, you handheld this, you need to attempt to automatically align the source images so it will align them perfectly. Then you need to create a smart, job, smart object after loading the layers. You need a smart object to do what we're going to do to make that water blur. So click on create smart object after loading layers, then click OK. Now, once you do that, uh, Photoshop is going to, as you can see on the far right, it's loading all the images in a stack. After it loads all the images in a stack, you can see it's going to align the second selected layers based on content. So it's actually looking at the pixels of the images and it's aligning all of them. Now, once it's done with that, it will create a smart object. So you won't see all these layers over here. You'll have one smart object at the top. Now this will take a little uh, time to do. 
The smaller your image is, the faster it goes. That's why I exported them at 2000 pixels on the long edge. So if you do export um, full resolution JPEGs, it's going to take quite a long time. Also, if you use anything other than JPEG, it's going to take a long time. So if you're loading TIFFs or PSDs or something like that, it's going to take even longer. So I'm going to pause the video and when it's near the end here, um, I will restart the video and we'll take up from there. Okay, it's just finishing up there and now it's going to create that smart object. Uh, you'll notice that around the edges there's some blank pixels. That's because it aligned uh, the images, the aligned all those layers uh, so that they were perfectly aligned and in doing so it had to kind of twist some and move others and we have blank pixels around the edges. We'll crop those out at the end. Now you'll notice, as I mentioned, it uh, got rid of all those individual layers of images and we have one smart object. Now we're just going to duplicate this uh, by hitting Command J on my Mac, Control J on a PC. I'm only doing that uh, because it's easier for me to give you a before after. All right, so we have this. Now what we need to do is blur that water. To do that, we're gonna go up to Layer, Smart Objects, then we're going to uh, go down to this part down here called stack mode. And then you'll see there's entropy, kurtosis, maximum, mean. What you wanted to use is either mean or median. Both of these pretty much do the same thing, but in some instances, one might be a little better than the other. For this demonstration, I'll just click on median. And you'll see after a second, we're gonna have, after maybe more than a second, we have blurry water. So that's basically how you do it. Let me uh, zoom out a little bit, or zoom in I should say. There is before, and there's after. Before, after. You can see in doing so, it got rid of those blank pixels and replaced it with black. We still could crop that away, so that's no big deal. Okay, now you've done this, so you have blurry water now. Um, there are some instances where you may have to do some fixing. For example, uh, let's say it was a windy day. Uh, what this does when you use mean or median is anything that is moving, it, it kind of blends everything moving together. So the water was moving in this image, so it blended all that together. So we got this kind of um, movement look on the water. But if it's a windy day in the tree, tops were moving, you'd get blur up there as well. You may not want that. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to grab one of those 30, what were this, 34, 36 images, one of those images, add it to this uh, layers over here on top, and then use a mask so that we're only going to mask in the silky water. Now to do that, um, just go up to file. Now again, you may not have to do this. Go up to file and open. And when you do that, just pick one of your images, one that you particularly like, maybe the sky in. In my case, they all looked identical. So I'm just going to grab the first one and we're going to click open. Now when I do that, it opens it up in its, it opens it up in its own tab. I'm going to get the move tool, hit the V key for the move tool, hold the sh uh, left mouse left button down on your mouse and just drag that image up to the other tab and we're going to drop it right on top. Hold the shift key down and it will center it right in the center. So you can see now over here on the layers uh, panel, it's sitting on top. We've covered up our blurry water though. And you could also see that it's not aligned. See how it's shifting? We need to align it to the, to the layers below. Unfortunately, you can't do an alignment with a smart object. See how this one's a smart object? So I won't be able to align that top layer with that layer because this layer is a smart object. So I need to what's called rasterize this layer. Uh, to do that, here we'll turn that off for a minute. To do that, just right click right on that layer and then go down to rasterize layer right here. And when you do that, it's now a normal layer and I'll be able to align the top layer with it. Now to do this alignment, just click on that top layer, hold the shift or command or control key down and click on that layer. So we're, they're both selected. Then we're going to go up to edit, 
and then down to Auto Align Layers. And then you're going to want to just use the Auto Projection and click OK. Now because we're only doing two layers, this will go much quicker. All right, so we've aligned those layers now. Now what you need to do is get a layer mask for this top layer. So go down here and just click on the layer mask icon. So we have a mask on it. Now the mask is white, so the only thing we could do is paint in black. So we're going to get a brush, hit the B key on your keyboard for the brush tool. Make sure you're painting in black over here to these swatches. Make sure they're black and white. If they're not black and white, hit the D key on your keyboard. The D key will give you the default swatches of black and white. Make sure X is the foreground swatch by hitting the X key until it is. Then with a really big brush like I have, you could come in here and just paint in the blurry water. And we're going to not paint on the trees and of course not paint up onto the sky at all. And I'm going to do this water in the foreground as well. I'm going to zoom out a little, hit Command minus on my Mac, or on my, yeah, on my Mac. And paint in here as well. So we've just basically used that one image for the trees and the sky and the banks and other things. And we're using our blended images for the water. So you can see our layer mask there. And I'll just uh, hit Command-0 to fit to screen. So there is our blurry water. And just to remind you, uh, this, oops, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what we started with. Now. Uh, again, we have those blank pixels. I'll show you how to get rid of those real quick. So we'll zoom back out. And what I'll do is I'll get the crop tool. And we want to, I want to at least keep the uh, same aspect ratio of 3 to 2. So all you need to do then is come in and get, just crop in the corners until you get rid of all those blank pixels. Right? And then click the little check mark at the top. So we got rid of the blank pixels. In some cases they were black pixels, but we got rid of them all. Now we could export this uh, from Photoshop. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Export As. Now I'm using what they call the Legacy Export dialog box. So yours might not look like this. Uh, so I'll show you how to get this one if you want to use this one in a moment. But let's just export it as the size 1993 by 1328. Remember I started out with images that were 2,000 pixels wide, but we did crop those blank pixels out, so that's why it's a little smaller. Now again, you don't have to resize these images after you process them. I process mine in Lightroom. You don't have to use Lightroom either, so you could have used any um, post-processing raw developer to process your images, and then when you export them out of that application, um, I exported them as uh, with a long edge of 2,000. So again, you don't have to do that. So Glen Falls. All right, so I'm going to save it to the desktop like that. All right, now I could save all my work. Uh, this is all these layers intact and everything. I'm just going to go up to File and then down to Save As. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. And I'm again going to call this Glen Falls. It's going to be glenfalls.psd. I do sub uh, suggest you save it as a Photoshop file, and then save that. Now I had mentioned uh, I use the legacy export dialog box. I just prefer to use that to um, make sure, or if you want to switch to that, go up to Photoshop, Preferences. I believe this is under the Edit menu if you're using a PC. And then you go down to Export, and then you'll get the Preferences dialog. And right at the bottom it says Use Legacy Export As. You can see I have mine checked. So that's how you do that if you need to. And now you're done. You're all done. You've just blurred the water. So if you ever find you're out and you do not have a tripod or you don't have an ND filter, you could still get blurry water as long as your camera can do some type of high-speed continuous shooting. I also recommend that you ha uh, fire off at least 20 images. I found 20 to be the sweet spot. Anything less water doesn't look as good you could do a hundred and it doesn't make it look much better so around 20 I used 34 or whatever it was and you could see it did a decent job thank you everyone who watches my videos I really do appreciate it I'll talk to you guys soon <laughs>